Hey guys and welcome to the part 2 of our Shadow Catcher tutorial. Uh, in this part I'm going to show you the most typical use case for the Shadow Catcher which is uh, we, if we have at our disposal both a GDRM map and a backplate. So first thing we're going to do is to bring in our backplate and uh, we're going to disable filtering. That is always good for the backplate. We don't, do not need to blur it any more than it is. Uh, put it into our a environment slot and of course since this is a backplate we're going to change our environment mapping to screen okay once this is done I'm going to just uh, show our backplate in a viewport I'm going to enable save frame so we see it and uh, right off the bat we can see that our aspect ratio is not correct so let's take a look at the resolution of our backplate and it's 7360 so let's put here 7360 by uh, 4912 4, 4, and we can now lock the aspect ratio change the resolution back to something manageable and uh, now we can uh, next next thing we got to check for is the lens width this this was captured with so Obviously here we can see it's 55 millimeters. So once we create our camera We can go ahead and I've already set up previously 55 millimeters, but default it's 45 millimeters So you just set 55 millimeters here Okay, now we now we just got to orient our camera so that it somewhat matches the back plate uh, what I usually like to do is to use some straight lines in my scene and match them with some straight lines onto the backplate. So here we can use these lines on the uh, on the ground plane to match it with the uh, road, which should be at least roughly straight. <coughs> okay. Once this is done, I can just zoom in a little bit and shift it to get our get our scale somewhat somewhat looking right. And uh, once we are done with this, this actually looks quite good. I'm gonna just lock our camera so we don't accidentally move it. Okay. Uh, uh, one thing I changed apart uh, from the default settings is I set secondary solver to path tracing. Obviously, uh, this situation is an exterior scenario, therefore uh, there is not much of a, a low light bouncing around, so we do not really need any complex secondary GI solution. Okay, we can just do quick render to see what we get right now, but not much is happening just yet. Uh, next thing we're going to do is just uh, get Corona Shadow Catcher, our Shadow Catcher material. We're gonna plug this in a backplate. This is screen, so uh, this setting projection mode is gonna be screen projection onto geometry. Okay, now we're gonna just uh, assign our backplate to the ground plane and call it Shadow Catcher. Do a quick render, see what we got. And now we got to set up our backplate. Next thing we're gonna do is to set up our environment map. And so I'm just gonna I'm gonna use the smaller one so it loads faster for the purpose of this of this tutorial. I'm gonna of course open it in a few uh, in the full dynamic range with the full exposure. And uh, once this is done, then we need to do a little bit of shuffle. Uh, we need to put this one here in the environment map. So it's going to be our environment. This is going to light our scene. And uh, this one, our backplate, we're going to put this into direct visibility override because we want to see our backplate in our background. Okay, let's make sure this didn't change. Let's make sure this is spherical environment. Now let's take a look at our backplate. We can see we can see uh, kind of how oriented it is and we're gonna orient it uh, so that it matches orient our environment map let's call it HGRI let's also disable filtering we're gonna orient our HGR map so that it matches with our backplate now if I do just a quick rotation 
of the map. I'm gonna just maybe increase the resolution here of the texture map so so they don't appear so blurry. That's a little better. Okay, now just using U offset, I'm gonna rotate it. And for some weird reason, as you can see, uh, by default, 3ds Max uh, uh, maps the environment mapping mirrored horizontally. So all we can, all we have to do is just set tiling to minus one, which will flip flip it horizontally. And now, if we rotate around, we can see that we got exactly the same part of the HDRI as is photographed on our backplate. So let's just maybe align it a little bit more so it's a little bit more precise like this okay once we got this set up then we can just render again and see what we got so far and you can already see uh, the lighting is sort of matching maybe the exposure is is not completely not completely right we might need to just crank up our hdri a little bit so just maybe 1.3 so we get it a little brighter and as you can see everything perfectly fits fits uh, together our lighting our uh, our shadows you can see how how the uh, our backplate is projected on the geometry so in reflection you can see this nice stretching that you would see in real life and everything feels just nice and grounded so uh, this is this is uh, this is basically what what you need to do when you when you are when you want to use both backplate and HDRI. Next thing I want to show you, of course, is uh, how to prevent uh, affecting uh, how to prevent backplate from being affected by color mapping. Oftentimes, client will may want uh, the backplate to remain unaltered. So, or uh, when you when you are just tweaking exposure. Of the of the environment lighting uh, and contrast on env of environment lighting, basically, when you are tweaking environment lighting, uh, you do not want to affect the backplate as well. You actually want to uh, tweak your environment lighting so it matches the backplate as as it is. And for that, we are just going to use Corona, excuse me, Corona output map, which we are going to drag here, and make sure affected by color mapping is disabled and we're gonna drag this in here as well and once we render now <coughs> you can see the backplate remains one to one uh, with what we got here but if i crank up exposure to like five and render again it doesn't update in real time in in the frame buffer you got a render for that so it recalculates but you can see right now uh, whatever i do our <coughs> backplate will always remain one to one exactly as it was as it is if you dis display it uh, for example in a picture viewer so maybe let's let's go with exposure of two that's too much let's try one uh, still too much let's go back to zero but maybe we want a little bit more contrast and maybe raise the exposure a little bit so our car fits better with our backplate and this looks kind of nice so uh, this is it for the first use case which is both hdr and a backplate and in the next part i'm gonna use uh, i'm gonna show you how to set up shadow catcher with hdr map only when you do not have any backplate so see you in the next part